Hello, welcome to the Argentina Texas Chamber of Commerce webinar series. Um, my name is Silvia Menechuk. I am part of the Technology and Innovation Committee. Uh, our chamber has the mission to help companies in Argentina and Texas to connect, network, expand, and scale up their businesses. And we are uh, different committees and different activities that we are really uh, very eager to share with you. So if you have any questions about what we do and how, uh, how can we help you, we really would like to, to answer that after the webinar or in any other moment. Uh, today, we are going to continue with the series of webinars on Amazon Small Business Accelerator. The first one was about what the platform is and how it helps companies not only to sell, but also to buy through the platform. And today, we have another Motasev who is going to share with us how to use the platform to expand businesses globally. Uh, so welcome, Nader, and we are eager to know about all you have to tell us. Great, thank you. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Um, let me take that from you. Okay. Can everyone see my screen now? Is that just fine? Uh, not yet, not me. How about now? Yep, perfect. Yep. Right now. Awesome. So hi, everyone. I'm Nader with the Amazon Global Selling Team. So today I will talk to you about all the global expansion opportunities that we have currently today and um, all the new marketplaces that we're opening up um, this year and, you know, future plans. So with that, um, I'll move forward. <clears throat> so I'm sure everyone is familiar with Amazon.com and um, a lot of you must shop there. I definitely do. Um, we have beyond our Amazon.com account, we have 300 million um, world active, worldwide active customer accounts. So just outside of the US and then 150 million of those are pr paid prime members, which um, I, I'm sure if you know, um, the prime membership gives you free one to two day shipping, sometimes same day. And um, excluding Amazon.com, there's over 700 million uh, unique monthly visitors to our global websites. Um, so there's a huge opportunity to have a very expansive outreach outside of just the United States um, in, in terms of your e-commerce business. And as you all know, I mean, Amazon's a worldwide brand and just in 2020, they were ranked uh, the most valuable brand um, according to uh, Statista. So, you know, the thing with, when you sell on Amazon, you're kind of backed by Amazon's trust, trusted badge. And um, especially if you utilize our Amazon warehouses, you'll get the Prime and FBA badge, which makes cu customers even more comfortable purchasing your products. Um, and so, you know, with that, a lot of people have their own standalone web websites, but you're just not going to see the same amount of traffic as you would if you launched your business globally through Amazon. Um, one of our biggest marketplaces is Europe. Um, that consists of now eight main countries that we have fulfilled by Amazon warehouses in, um, and that um, I'll get to that in the next slide. But overall, there's nearly 200 million um, e-commerce shoppers in Europe today and expected e-commerce sales is getting close to 500 billion um, uh, in 2021. And the digital buyer penetration as a percent of the population is over 60% and getting closer to 70% as we speak because of the COVID uh, pandemic. So Europe is a massive opportunity and we've seen a lot of businesses see a lot of success um, as they expand into our second biggest marketplace outside of .com. Um, so the five main countries that, uh, you know, we have fulfilled by Amazon warehouses in are Germany, UK, France, Italy, and Spain. And just recently, we've opened up Amazon Sweden, Netherlands, and Poland. So, um, and the, the nice thing about this is you only have to um, open one account. You don't have to have a separate account for all the, the eight different countries. So just by opening one account, um, you would have access to all these countries and then plus an additional 20 something uh, European countries that all shop on these eight websites. 
So <clears throat> you don't have to pay subscription fees for each country on its own. It's a kind of one payment fits all type of thing. And it's, it's a very good value in terms of the number of customers you can um, reach in Europe. Um, our second biggest e-commerce um, business is in Germany and Europe, um, 85 million plus average monthly users. And um, we have extensive that fulfilled by Amazon warehouses uh, throughout the country. Um, and the shoe category is by far the most popular in Germany, um, and then followed by books and electronics and also furniture and sporting goods and things like that. So really there's a, there's a plethora of categories that are very popular in the German country. And another benefit of uh, Germany is that um, you'll have Austrian uh, consumers visiting the German site since they speak German as well. Um, so you're really, it's a two for one uh, country because you're just getting access to the citizens in both Germany and Austria. And then our largest uh, e-commerce business in, in Europe is the UK. And, you know, as you all are, are aware, um, you know, Brexit is pretty much certain. And so even with Brexit, you, you know, our, our, sell, our third party sellers who currently sell in Europe, they are just basically splitting their um, inventory half into the UK and let's say another um, half or a quarter in Germany, another quarter, maybe in one of the other European marketplaces. So we're not seeing any sort of disruption in regard to, you know, our third party uh, businesses selling in both the UK and the mainland Europe. Um, thankfully, uh, you know, we have expansive fulfillment networks all through mainland Europe, as well as in the UK. So um, don't let that deter you from expanding into Europe just because of um, the Brexit barrier. And also, um, we, if you're worried about like translation services and things like that in, in mainland Europe, um, we have plenty of preferred partners that can help you with your translations. Um, it's actually pretty streamlined and you can have your translations done within, you know, two to three weeks and on top of having your US or your English based listings in the UK. So then going um, beyond those eight countries that I mentioned, there's another 28 uh, countries that shop on these European sites. So you're getting access to Austrian, Belgian, Bulgarian, I mean, everywhere, all over Eastern Europe. Um, these shoppers all come to these um, local European domains and they do their online shopping there. So you're getting access really to all of mainland Europe, not just uh, the, the eight mentioned uh, countries that have the fulfilled by Amazon warehouses. Um, and so again, Amazon's the number one site in the majority of these countries and we expect it to continue to um, flourish um, in the coming years. And then, so we also have new marketplaces that we've recently opened up in the last five years or so. And one of the main ones is um, Australia. They've been seeing a um, pretty substantial year over year growth. And the nice thing about Australia is, is it's the, the requirements to get into Australia are fairly low. Um, it's, it's pretty easy and there's no language barrier. So there's no requirement for, you know, uh, translating your listings and things like that. And they're continuously growing their fulfilled by Amazon warehouse network and also adding more and more um, eligible categories to be sold in Australia. Um, it's similar to Australia is around 30 million citizens. So it's very similar to Canada. So you should expect similar type of sales figures and things like that, depending on the product category. But the entitlement is about 30 million users of which, you know, um, a good amount, I'd say 20 to 30 percent are shopping online digitally. But that number is continuing to grow as well. Um, and especially that we're expanding our fulfilled by Amazon warehouse network that we're being able to, we're able to reduce our shipping times to, you know, to offer prime shipping and things like that in Australia as well now. Um, and then lastly, uh, or not lastly, second to last, we have Amazon in Japan, which is our third largest economy. Um, and we, it's a third party sellers, it's really a toss up between Europe and Japan as to the first marketplace they want to expand to. Um, we see our third party businesses do really well in Japan just because they are a very um, digitized kind of um, economy. Uh, their e-commerce e uh, penetration is substantial compared to some of the other countries. Um, 
you know, as of the time of the slide, it was 72%, but it's closer to 80% now that are per making their purchases online. Um, and there's roughly 90 million average monthly unique visitors visiting amazon.co.jp. So if you're really, um, it's really a toss up between Japan and Europe. If you're looking to go big, I would say one of these two marketplaces would be your best bet um, to see um, a, a large growth in your global sales. Um, and then going forward, we have a lot of emerging marketplaces that are smaller, but the barrier to entry is lower and the competition is also lower just because they're so new. Um, and so some of these emerging ones are um, Amazon Brazil, which we just launched earlier this year, or late last year. Um, we have Amazon Turkey, we, which we also launched last year. And then we also have uh, Middle East, North Africa, which right now um, includes Saudi Arabia and uh, United Arab Emirates. We also have Amazon Singapore, which does not require any translations. Um, all the listings would be in English. And we also have Amazon India. So there, these are all um, fairly new marketplaces, but um, we're seeing substantial growth on a monthly basis. And you know, if you're looking for kind of um, an easier, less competitive domain to enter as your first venture into global selling, um, one of these market marketplaces is ideal. Um, their tax requirements are, are much lower. Um, you know, in certain cases, they don't require tax IDs, whereas in Europe, you'll have to obtain a value added tax ID, which I can go into further detail in, in the Q&A. Um, but again, as you can see on the map, we're, we're really expanding across the entire um, globe. And so it's really, it's up to you where you want to go first and, um, and which, which marketplaces you want to um, prioritize in your global expansion efforts. And so that, that was my slide. And then I just wanted to show you all one more, um, one more thing, which is our sell.amazon site. So you would simply go to sell.amazon.com. And this is going to be a very informational and beneficial website for you. So once you're on sell.amazon.com, what you'll want to do is go to the grow tab. And then there's uh, international e-commerce, this bar right here. So you click on that. And again, this is similar to like what I've been speaking about just in the last few minutes. Um, but really, we have, you know, ex extensive guides that will show you all the processes that you need to take um, in order to expand. Right now, we currently have um, extensive PDF guides for Europe, Japan, and Australia, and we will be releasing more for our emerging marketplaces. But for now, we've been tackling our largest global uh, markets. So if I click on um, expand to Europe. There's the global selling guide here, um, which is a <clears throat> kind of it's a, it, it provides you with a checklist of all the things you need to get done in order to um, expand to Europe. And then um, beyond that, we have <clears throat> customer testimonials um, highlighting and showcasing other third party sellers that have expanded globally. And then we have, um, you know, uh, of that guide, basically anything that has to do with expanding your business, we, we've got it covered on this website. So I highly recommend that you um, favorite this and I can provide the link again after um, the presentation. But, you know, if I simply download the guide, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it'll walk you through a checklist. <clears throat> so first, your first step would be prepare, preparation. Um, and so you'll learn about our European stores and then you'll learn about value added tax and how it works and how you would go about obtaining it. And then from there, um, we'd walk you through how to register and then start listing your products and so on and so forth, you know, shipping and fulfilling and then how to manage and optimize your business. Um, so we, we really have all that covered in these guides. And like I mentioned right now, we have them for Europe, Japan, and Australia, and soon we will have them for Middle East, North Africa, and Singapore. Um, so this site will definitely be your best friend, and I will provide a link um, after the, the presentation for any, anyone that's interested. And so that's really the global selling opportunity. I'd like to open it up for Q&A now, if, if that sounds good to everyone. Great. Well, we already have a question here. Um... Uh, I have some extra questions too. And if someone else has any other question, please type it in the Q&A. The first one uh, is from Robert Schwager. 
and he would like to know uh, if a US customer can make a purchase and then delivery um, it um, through a third party uh, in Europe in Switzerland, Italy, Germany, uh, something like I, a customer here in US purchases something and send it to his family, for example, in Europe, things like that. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, my wife actually just recently, her friend lives in the UK and she just recently had a baby. So my wife went to amazon.co.uk and ordered a product and had it shipped to her friend. Um, and it got to her within two days. So yes, you can definitely do that. You, as a US customer, you can visit these sites and then you put, make an order and have it shipped to um, a resident of your, your, of your preference in those countries. Okay, uh, so it's not through the Amazon US. I should go to Amazon UK to do that. Yeah, you're correct. Um, through the US, we have a program called FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon um, export. So if you're a US based uh, business and you sell on amazon.com, um, if you enable this feature, uh, what happens is Amazon will then analyze your entire catalog and determine whether your product is eligible uh, to be cross border shipped um, across 100 uh, over 100 different countries. So let's say you have a catalog of shoes. Um, in most cases, it would, the shoes would be eligible to be shipped to any country. So if I'm a German customer and I'm visiting .com because I couldn't find the shoes I'm looking for on let's say the German or the UK sites and I come to .com and then that third party seller has FBA export enabled, I would actually be able to purchase that product off the .com site um, as a German customer. So really we're trying to make it so that regardless of where you're based or where you source from, um, we can ship your products or uh, customers can receive your products all around the world. Great, and does that work for Latin American companies too? Um, so yes, yes. So, that, so if, you're, um, you know, if you're in a country in Latin America, let's say Argentina, um, Argentina is included. So depending on um, the third party sellers for uh, eligible products, you can visit .com and see whether or not their product is it, 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 on the page. It should say, as long as you have your address in place um, on your in your account, um, Amazon will automatically analyze whether their product is eligible to be shipped to your um, to your residence. Great. Um... Uh, coming back to the different marketplaces you have all around the world, uh, for a company, for example, from US or Argentina that would like to sell there, should, uh, in a way, establish itself in the United Kingdom, for, for example, and have the products there or use the Amazon fulfillment. That's the, the way it should be. They have to create a company in UK. How does it work? No, so you, you don't have to do that. Um, so most of our US businesses, they basically, they just register um, for a, a value added tax ID, let's say in, in any of the European countries, and they don't have to um, establish any form of business in that domain. They can continue to operate as a US based business. And that's typically the case for all the other um, marketplaces. Um, and so yeah, you continue to op operate as is. You don't have to establish any new form of um, identity or business in, in the target marketplaces. Okay, uh, we have another question from the colleague, which is, what are the expansion plans for Amazon e-commerce into South America outside of Brazil, Colombia, Peru, Ecuador, for shipping of goods to these countries? Right, so, um, as of right now, I don't have much insight beyond um, our Brazil efforts in, in South America. I do know that um, we are starting to roll out Fulfilled by Amazon for Brazil because up until now, it's mostly been where the business itself, the merchant, um, fulfills their own orders into Brazil. So you would be responsible for um, the, the entire shipment process. Um, we're gradually starting to roll out Fulfilled by Amazon in Brazil um, and then so beyond that, I, I don't know, but um, I can, you know, I'm pretty confident that this is just the, the start of our expansion efforts in South America. Great. 
Um, I would like to know, uh, you mentioned that um, when, for example, when you enable that uh, fulfillment by Amazon uh, for international export, uh -huh. yes, uh, Amazon kind of analyzed the whole catalog and sees what the, the products are uh, viable in other markets or not, and as I said that. If for a seller, for example, is it possible to, to have information or to find information through uh, Amazon Analytics or something like that, where you can uh, find out about the performance of different types of products in different markets and have more information about uh, the kind of market study of the market before you decide to go to one of them? Absolutely. So. Um... There's, there's a few different ways you can do that. So let's say you're already selling on amazon.com and you enable FB, the FBA export feature, which would open up your catalog to all eligible countries that would be able to purchase your um, export eligible products. Um, there, within amazon.com, you can download a, a report which would show you your FBA export um, sales activities. So um, in a lot of situations we've had a U.S. based business reach out to us and say, hey, I'm actually I'm seeing uh, I've, I've enabled FBA export and I'm seeing I'm, I have a considerable amount of sales, let's say, in the U.K. every month. Um, I think this is a good idea for me to actually um, expand into the U.K. now. So that's a very good tool for them to use. And then um, I also know that a lot of third party sellers, what they do is what um, they'll visit the the um, target domains like so let's say if they're thinking about UK and they want to see if their product will do well, they'll go visit the UK site and they'll look up the product category. And there we have kind of the a ranking system about the most popular products. It doesn't provide you with like demand forecast, but it gives you a good idea of, you know, where does it rank within the products? And it, it, it helps our sellers um, decide, you know, whether their product categories are, is the right fit for that um, target country. And then, if you're already selling on .com, um, I know we have a lot of internal teams that are working with um, um, our marketing partners or internal marketing partners to showcase. Um, they're they're using a lot of um, technology to predict the global demand for your product. So um, you know, if you're selling on in the U.S., you might get an email saying, "Hey, we've noticed that your top five products in the U.S. would be a great fit for such and such country." So. Um, you, there, there, there are email communications that provide additional uh, kind of forecasting insights as well. Great, thank you. We we'll have another another question here. Can Amazon e-commerce function as a third-party shipper of PPE, that is rubber, gloves, and medical masks from Southeast Asia, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, to export into Brazil? Would this be a air freight or sea freight for large volumes? Um, so as the third party seller, you would be responsible for the shipment from your, let's say your warehouse in China or Thailand into Brazil. Um, and so basically um, if you wanna utilize fulfilled by Amazon um, warehouses, it's your responsibility to get your product to the Amazon warehouse. Once it reaches the Amazon warehouse, that's when Amazon will take care of kind of all the delivery to the customers and also deal with the customer service and returns and things like that. Um, but, but as a starting point, you will always be the responsible party to ship your product to the Amazon warehouse or directly to the consumer. So like uh, Amazon at no point will, will they come and pick your product up. Uh, from your um, or, or origination warehouse and deliver it to the customer if that's the question. Okay, and in that case, for example, let's let's imagine that my my manufacturer is in, in China mm -hmm. and I decide to ship it to the fulfillment in Japan. Can they deliver to Brazil? No. Um, no. So that that won't be possible. Um, Again, the only way that you can get it out of an FBA warehouse that's not in Brazil to a customer in Brazil is through similar thing, FBA export, which I believe is only available for .com. I can check if it's available for some of our larger marketplaces, but 
in that situation, let's say you um, send it from your warehouse to a US based Amazon warehouse, and then you en enable FBA export, and then a Brazilian customer visits your site on .com, at that point, then yes, the Amazon would take care of that shipment. Perfect. I don't know if it's any other question there. No. But I understand the question, like you're trying to limit the amount of distance that your product has to go. Um, unfortunately, it, you know, for a lot of, so we have a lot of third party sellers in the US where they do have like a warehouse in China or Thailand or Vietnam. Um, and they typically send their shipment to the US for .com. Um, but in certain situations, if their volumes are high enough, they'll say, you know what, let me split my shipment in half. I'll, I'll send um, half of it to the US and I'll, from that warehouse, I'll send a quarter to Japan and another quarter to Europe to reduce the amount of uh, travel that their product has to go and li limit their shipping costs. Um, so that's how most sellers go about it. Um, but yeah, as of right now, we can't make it so that you, you go the shortest distance to the closest warehouse and then we fulfill orders in all the other countries. Um, you, you do have to um, send your, your, your original shipment to an FBA warehouse in the said country that you want to sell in. Um, great. Well, I don't know if you have any other question in the, in the audience to... Uh, tell me something another. Uh, do you think that the companies that can use the all these possibilities of selling uh, globally should have any special characteristic or for example, can a company that I'm sorry, I have my dog here and he's doing a lot of noises. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> It's like a baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> point, the point is, um, what I'm trying to ask is, uh, a small company, for example, that decides that it uh, will only produce to, for export, for example, can it get uh, advantage of this type of resources that Amazon offers? Definitely. Be? I definitely think um, this really benefits small and medium-sized businesses because the cost of capital um, the amount of capital required to do this is pretty, pretty low. It, it's much lower than if you were ex planning to expand on your own and developing your own site with localization um, efforts and things like that. Um, and one thing I'd like to mention is if, if you have a unique product or if you own your brand, you're a brand owner, um, those types of businesses are doing really well globally just because they have a unique product. It's a unique brand that's not replicated. Um, they tend to do really well. Uh, resellers, so if you're like if you resell shoes or electronics, they still do pretty well as well. Um, just depending on what's popular. So I would definitely always try to match up your product catalog with the most popular um, products on those Amazon sites. So sometimes what I've done is I'll visit, like I just recently we recently launched uh, Amazon Sweden. I wanted to see what's what what are really popular product categories there. So I go to the site and then I let Google translate the entire site for me. And I'm quickly able to see, okay, these are kind of the trending products. These are the top products. And then I would be able to match it up against my current catalog. Um, and I could see whether or not, you know, it, it fits. If, if, if the products I have are popular there, then that, that would be a good indication that um, I'd want to take that endeavor and expand in, in that country. Um, one, other thing, one other thing I'd like to mention is that we've recently rolled out um, a feature called linked accounts. And so that basically unifies all of these different marketplaces to one uh, central account for you. And prior to this, um, basically, if you had a US account um, or a North America account, which would be US, Canada, and Mexico, you would pay $40 a month for your um, professional uh, Amazon selling account. And then if you wanted to expand to Europe, you'd pay another like around 40 euros. And then for Japan would be something like 20 or $30. And so it, it all added up to well over, you know, $150 if you wanted to be ex expanding all these marketplaces as a monthly subscription fee. Well, now if you opt to link your account and unify all these different uh, markets, you just pay 
a one-off uh, $40 subscription fee for all the marketplaces. So you'll have, you know, a, a substantial uh, savings by doing that. And um, we're seeing a huge adoption of this new linked account feature because, um, you know, $150 savings is, is quite a lot on a monthly basis. Great. Uh, I have two questions here from the public, which is, uh, what is, what is Amazon doing to ensure security of products shipped to Mexico in customs and warehouse to prevent uh, pillage and loss of products shipped to clients? Right. So um, we have um, our uh, like a preferred partner network. Um, so they're very reputable companies that um, will be the exporter of record and they, they get your product through customs and things like that. And that can all also be tracked um, within your seller central account. And then um, in, in most cases, you'll have like an account manager from that preferred partner working with you on your shipments. Um, so we have pretty good insight on that. Um, and these are very experienced partners. Um, and so they mostly handle that. And then if it's, if it's Amazon's fulfillment, um, taking care of the shipment, then in that situation, again, um, you know, you're hundred percent backed by Amazon's guarantee. And, um, so in most cases, our third party sellers really don't have any, um, minimal, they'll, they'll have minimal issues, um, exporting into, uh, Mexico or any other country, therefore. Great. The second question I have here is if any Argentine business sets up in the US and wants to sell to Latin America, what would be the best Spanish language Amazon site to use? Um, so that would be um, Amazon Mexico, I think from a proximity standpoint um, would be the best. Um, obviously Spain um, as well, but it's just much farther. Um, but so as of right now, I think if you wanted to, um, you know, list on a Spanish speaking site, it would be uh, Amazon Mexico. And then from there, um, you know, uh, to see if your products are eligible for export into the other Latin American countries. But yeah, like, I think it would be a good idea for the Argentinian business to, let's say, open up a U.S. account or a North America account. So that way you have access to U.S., Canada and Mexico and then um provide your Spanish listings on the Mexico site. Right. Um, well, I don't have any more questions. I don't know if anyone else has one, but please, uh, maybe there is something that we are missing, some questions that you already have in any other webinars you provided, seminars that you uh, have given and that may be interesting for us to know and we didn't ask. Yeah, so, um... Basically, I think regarding Europe, um, before you used to be able to ship your product. Let's, so if you're, you know, if you're an uh, English speaking US based uh, business, historically, what they would do is just ship their product to the UK, and then they would be able to fulfill orders out of the UK into mainland Europe. Well, now because of Brexit, that's no longer possible. Um, so um, if you do plan to go to Europe, what you want to do is send a separate shipment, let's say into Germany or one of the mainland countries. It could be Germany, France, Italy, Spain, um, Poland, or uh, Netherlands. And then, then you would have a separate shipment go to the UK. That's a key difference that's um, post-Brexit. That is the current um, situation right now. Um, so I don't know if any of the sellers that were interested, like let's say last year to do this, um, the process has changed slightly. And a lot of the countries, since e-commerce sales are doing so well in Europe, um, a lot of the European countries are requiring a value-added ta tax ID. So in the past, you used to be able to just uh, ship your product there, list it, and tax-free sales. Um, but now, uh, then it became where if you hurt, uh, hit a certain threshold, and I think um, Italy and Spain are still at where you, if you generate more than, let's say, 70,000 euro, then you're liable for the taxes on that. But now um, UK, Germany and France all require for you to have a value added tax ID um, prior to shipping your product into their countries and storing it there. Um, so we have a, we have set up um, a third part or a preferred partner network with um, a lot of uh tax advisors and um, companies like KPMG, uh, Deloitte, 
things like that. So you can work with them to have them obtain the, uh, the local value added tax IDs through these uh, different countries that require them now. Um, and with sales growing so substantially all over the world, we would expect, you know, more, more countries, global countries following suit. Um, that's why some sellers um, or third party US sellers for a lower level of effort, they'll, they'll start out in one of the newer marketplaces that don't have these stringent requirements in place yet. Um, and that would be like Brazil, Singapore, um, U U United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia and even um, Turkey. So that's one thing to know. Um, there is a higher level of effort to go into um, markets like the European market and the Japanese market, just because they are, um, they're so large and established, well-established now with a, a massive customer demand. Do you know what, what are the requirements for the Brazilian marketplace regarding the language of the product and the specifications that they require to be written in the products and everything like that? Um, so I don't have exact specifications for what products are eligible. I can reach out to my Brazil team and um, get like a detailed list and share with you um, after the presentation. Um, I do know that um, F FBA is not yet available um, for US based sellers, but I, we would expect to see that rolled out at some point this year, if not early next year. Um, and the language requirements would be, um, you know, translating your product into uh, Portuguese. Um, I don't believe that they're, 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 the listings are in English um, on the Brazil site. So those are the two main requirements. Um, as far as I know, there's no local requirements for you to have to establish a bank account within Brazil or anything like that. Um, it's, it's fairly easy to get your product there. The key, the key is just um, having your uh, listings translated right now. Um, but again, I can get more detail on the types of products that are eligible to be stored in Brazil or shipped to Brazil and provide that for your team. Great. Well, thank you for me. I don't have any more questions. If it's not any other question from the, from the audience, uh, I'm out of questions. So I don't know, Gabriela, if you would like to add something. Yeah. No, just uh, thanks, uh, Nader, for, for all the information you share. I think it's really worth it for, for the audience to, to have um, first hand from you and your team and, and Lois as well, who, who joined us uh, on, in the last session and today. Uh, it's really worth it. Uh, it's easy to, to navigate the, the, the Amazon road. So thank you very much. Uh, just that, uh, I would like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, as always, we, we will be sending you uh, a survey on the, on the webinars and we really look forward to, to your feedback. For us, it's, it's really important to, to have feedback about the things we do and the activities we, we run. So thank you in advance. Um, and uh, keep in touch through our website or through our social media channels. Uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, so we, we keep in touch uh, and uh, get uh, information about our uh, coming activities. Thank you, Nader. Thank you, Luis. And thanks, Amazon, for this opportunity. Thank you. Of course, thank you for the opportunity um, to present this. And then also, if any of your viewers are interested to learn more, definitely visit uh, sell.amazon.com. And then under the grow tab, go to international e-commerce. You will have, you will find um, plenty of information in much uh, more detail. Um, so yeah, please please do so if you are interested. Right. Thank you very much, and thank you, Maria Silvia. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye.